Hackensack City Council meeting Monday, July 19th. Uh, for those who just came in, welcome back. It's been 18 months since we've had a, uh, a council meeting live, and uh, it's good to be back. Oh, Madam Clerk. This meeting is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10-4-6 at SEC notice, which was sent to the record, Star Ledger, and was posted on the Municipal Bulletin Board. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Von Ruderborg. Here. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Here. Councilman Carroll. Here. Mayor LeBros. Here. Would, <clears throat> would everybody please rise for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah, we can do that. Yes, we can do that. Okay. So we do have some proclamations this evening. We have three, I believe. Correct? Yep. So the first one I'm going to do is so was Stephen Garcia present? Yes. Please come forward. So I have a proclamation for Stephen, and it reads, whereas Steve Garcia, a rising junior at Boston University studying biochemistry and molecular biology, and whereas has been studying the piano at the Thurnauer School of Music in Tenafly in 2011 and gave his graduation senior recital in 2019. Now therefore, I, John P. LeBros, Jr., Mayor of the City of Hackensack, along with the members of the City Council, do hereby thank Stephen Garcia for their, his piano performance at the installation ceremony that was held on July 1st, 2021. Thank you so much for that. Did a great job. He, not only did he do the National Anthem, uh, what was it? Four leaves. Four leaves. Four, four leaves. That's correct. And that uh, was wonderful. He's a great piano player. So uh, look out for this, this young man. He's on the rise. But thank you very, very much. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Take a quick picture. Yeah. 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 He plays soccer for the lawyer. He's a good guy. 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 Thank you. 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 So these proclamations are both for Eagle Scouts and anybody who knows anything about scouting uh, is one of the highest honors you can get in scouting and it's a tremendous amount of work and anybody who becomes an Eagle Scout uh, usually goes on to be quite successful. So whereas on November 17, 2019, Lorenzo Machurdo was awarded the Boy Scouts highest honor the Eagle Scout Award. And whereas the Boy Scouts of America is an organization that aims to develop character citizenship and physical and mental health through a broad program of work and play. Whereas Lorenzo has been a Cub Scout, a Boy Scout in Hackensack for 13 years, and he has par participated in Hackensack Slam Dunk the Junk for as long as he's been in a troop. He also led a team in creating a new garden and expanded existing garden for his local school for teaching agriculture, science, and biology. And whereas, Lorenzo has also participated in the Memorial Day flag ceremony on Main Street and at the USS Ling. 
And whereas Lorenzo's fine character and loyal citizenship have been displayed throughout his years of being with the Boy Scouts Troop 5, now, therefore, I, John P. LaBrosse, Jr., Mayor of the City of Council, along with members of the City Council, do hereby extend our sincere congratulations to Eagle Scout Lorenzo Machero on his current outstanding accomplishment and those to come. Okay. And we have one here for also Alan Gottlieb. On October 25th, 2020, Alan Gottlieb was awarded the Boy Scouts' highest honor, the Eagle Scout Award. And whereas the Boy Scouts of America is, is an organization that aims to develop character, citizenship, and physical and mental health through a broad program of hard work and play. And whereas Alan and his troop participated in Hackensack dunk, Slam Dunk the Junk clean up multiple times, he has also led his troop in sanding and repainting planters for his town's two schools. And whereas Alan's Gottlieb's fine character and loyal citizenship has been displayed throughout his years of being with Boy, Sco Boy Scout Troop 5. Now, therefore, I, John P. LaBrosse, Jr., Mayor of the City of Hackensack, along with the members of the City Council, do hereby extend our sincere congratulations to Eagle Scout Alan Gottlieb on his current outstanding accomplishments and those to come. So congratulations to those two young men. All right. With that, we'll move forward. I'd also like to take one minute of silence for all the people who perished or were injured in that horrible building collapse in Miami. Uh, we lost uh, over 150 or more of our... American citizens in that collapse, and I can't imagine the horror of just being in that building and having it fall down around you. So if we could have a moment of silence. Thank you very much. And with that, we're going to move to uh, approve the minutes of the May 18th, 2021 Executive Cal and the regular Executive Cal session and the regular minutes. The, we want to do them all at one time. Was everybody here? You could do the first four together. And okay, so Carol will have to abstain because he wasn't part of the council at the time. And in July first, you could do something. Okay, so in addition to May 18th, we'll do June 1st, 2021, Executive Cow and Regular Minutes. June 15th, 2021, Executive Cow and Regular Minutes. And June 22nd, 2021, Special Meeting Minutes. Need a motion, please. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Monroe. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Upstating. And Mayor LaBrasse. Aye. I need a motion for the July 1st, 2021 re reorganization meeting minutes. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Kennedy is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBrasse. Aye. Okay, and with that, we will go right into the city manager's report. Okay. Um, our next drive-in movie will be July 24th. It is the Tom and Jerry production. Uh, please visit hackpack.org to reserve your tickets. Our, our summer concert series has begun. Tomorrow night, it's Eagle Mania. Uh, the next concert will be on, it'll be on the green at 7.30. Uh, many other summer events are scheduled, such as Friday night sounds of summer at the Hack Pack, Shakespeare in the Park, and Sunset Yoga. So please refer to our website for updates. The Hackensack Police Department will be hosting our 20th uh, yearly Youth Academy from August 23rd to August 27th. Applications are available at our police department or our website at hackensack.org. That's the Youth Police Academy, which is open for uh, students between 8th and 12th grades. Uh, the city has closed on our building department location at 89 Anderson Street, so our building department is currently temporarily located at the rec center at 116 Holt Street. And lastly, Hackensack's National Night Out will be on Tuesday, August 3rd from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. on the green. Come join other city organizations for food, fun, handouts, and safety exhibits. That's all, Mayor. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna move right into new business. And uh, resolution 262-21. Allie, I'm not sure where you wanna put this amendment to this ordinance. Yeah. Ago. Um, I need a motion. You need a motion to amend the ordinance. So we need a motion before we go into that. I need a motion to amend the ordinance that we are looking to adopt. Okay. And uh, just before you vote, if you would like an explanation on the record for the yes, public. Yes, thank okay. you. So um, the council at its last meeting introduced um, an, an ordinance to create a zone for cannabis um, business specifically to authorize one
cannabis retailer and one cannabis cultivator, and they uh, established an overlay zone um, along the Route 80 corridor. And um, since it was introduced, and now tonight it's being considered on second reading, there were just some cleanup changes that had to be made to the ordinance to make sure that the language within the ordinance was consistent and that it was consistent with the statute. And there were just some changes. There was a terminology that um, a cannabis cultivation establishment, it should have been cannabis cultivator. Cannabis retail establishment was changed to cannabis retail retailer, again, to be consistent with the um, state law that authorized um, the, the ordinance that's being adopted. Uh, there was a definition of um, in cannabis grower that had been included in a draft because as you can imagine many this is all new for everyone in the state and people are borrowing from other towns and this other town had that definition and it doesn't apply here because we we're limiting it to a cultivator which is slightly different um and then there were some um so just some other cleanups as far as making sure it was it was consistent and tight within okay okay very good thank you so do you need to read the resolution or um, the amendment? Stephanie, you did the motion. Offer. Yep. Okay. And Leo. So now we need to vote. Roll call, please. Councilwoman von Runenborg? Aye. Mm -hmm. American Industry is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Aye. Councilman Carroll? Aye. Mayor Labrosse? Aye. Okay. So now we this move to resolution. Oh, go no, ahead. open to the public. We need a motion to open to the public. Oh, we need a motion to open to the public on this because it's Offer. an amendment. Offer. Roll call. Councilwoman Ron Rudenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Kenneshino is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Councilman Carroll? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Anybody from the public who would like to speak to this amended ordinance, amendment to the ordinance, please come forward, give your name to the clerk. Is this a three minute limit on this? No, it's open. Joel Dawkins, Hackensack resident. Good evening to all. Sitting before us are an employee of a medical company, former employee of a home comfortable living equipment maker, a teacher, a youth coach, and a homemaker. Possible examples of children, family, and home values. Yet, we are here today to hear about a cannabis zone in Hackensack. In their election win, their statement said, building a brighter future for all residents. While they sit, who is standing up for all residents? Cannabis, an alternative to other hardcore drugs. Using marijuana can produce stimulant, depressant, and hallucinogenic effects. While hemp is a plant variety derived from the genus cannabis, it differs in that it contains low concentrations of THC, a chemical compound known for hallucinogenic effects. Cannabis is commonly used as a recreational drug and is usually taken by the mouth or inhaled. Some people take cannabis by the mouth or as a spray to be applied under the tongue for symptoms of multiple sclerosis. Some people also use cannabis for nausea, vomiting, for an eye disease called glaucoma and many other conditions, but there is no good scientific evidence to support these uses. Today, we see the lawless activities in Manhattan, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. Drug stricken K2 addicts, apartment streets inundated with weed, smell as children sleep, play, and drivers openly driving and smoking, with pedestrians, hit and run killings increasing. 
yet he built New York style developer units to entice the New York City crowd at New York City prices. All with an eye for money. Yes, money. The driver of destroyed lives and souls across the globe. All at the price of safe streets, safe living, and safe families. The governments of this world wish to seduce us with their prostitution, gambling, and drugs of their Lord, the devil. The pandemic has given rise to the promotion of alcohol and spirits, the adoption of illicit drugs, and laws formulating the legal work rights of prostitutes and sex workers. Remove these vices and their promoters from our ranks. The residents of Hackensack wanted a vote for their children, a vote for family values, and community ideals, not for the puppet masters and their carpetbagger tricks and trades. All right, because we used to be called the land of the big snake, Hackensack, or it might be just coming true to life. Thank you. You. Anyone else from the public like to speak to this and this only? Can I just a quick um, I'm not judging anyone who smokes right. weed, wacky tobacco, whatever it's called. My question is, if my neighbor is smoking mm -hmm. in their backyard, right, and I'm trying to sit in my backyard with my grandchildren. What happens? Who has the right? Somebody told me that if we go to the police, there's nothing they can do. So what do I, just don't use my backyard anymore or open my windows? Well, is that, I don't, are you done or? Yeah, it really does my question. I, I, that's a good question. Um, I, I would have that conversation with my neighbor first to say, listen, that's kind of disturbing me. Could you go in your house and do it or, or something else because the smell outside is bothering no, me and my family. No, but, no. yeah. Okay. It it's maybe 20 years ago, let's say, you know, so it's, now you get a little nervous. But I think people that don't smoke right. marijuana mm -hmm. have rights also. I agree with that. I went into I Petco. That. I almost threw up. The guy walked past me. He smelled like, well, to me, it smells like skunk. And I'm like, oh, my God, and you drove here? It's scary. It, I don't know. A lot That's just my opinion. Understood. Understood. You know, and you know, my lungs are shot because I smoked for 50 years. But the, the next generation shouldn't have to smell it. It's horrible. And it's dangerous. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, I got a mic. I just want to make I just want to make clear that this ordinance does not govern use in your own home. So that if even if you were not to pass this ordinance, the conduct that um, this woman complained about could still occur because this has to do with um, the sale of it. The, if it's allowed in Lodi or Paramus or where have you, that same person could go there and purchase it legally and bring Absolutely. it to their home Probably and consume understand. it. So just so that the public understands that this ordinance is not allowing it in your backyard. Correct. Thank you. Anyone else in the public like to speak to this order or to this amendment and this amendment only? Well, yeah, uh, it's actually the whole ordinance. It's the whole ordinance. But the whole ordinance? Yes. Okay. You didn't read the uh, the uh, adoption part, did you? That's after adopted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? To the ordinance? Seeing none, motion to close to the public. Buffer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Runenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Penestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor Labrosse. Aye. Now you need a vote to adopt it. Need a motion to adopt the ordinance, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Penestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Council abstain. Councilman Carroll. Aye. And Mayor Labrosse. Aye. Okay.
Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen State of New Jersey that the ordinance number 30-2021 has passed its second and final reading and is hereby adopted. Thank you. I'm going to go to resolution 263-21. Introduction of Ordinance Number 31, 2021, an ordinance to amend Chapter 5 of the Code of the City of Hackensack, Chief Financial Officer, Section 5-6, Methods of Payment of Amounts Due to the City. Need a motion, please? Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenborg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Councilman Carroll? Aye. Mayor LeBron? Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 31 2021 as introduced does now pass on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 16, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the city council and such time and place all persons interested be given the opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on the first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 264-21. Introduction of ordinance number 32, 2021, an ordinance to amend chapter 117 of the Code of the City of Hackensack Parks to prohibit dogs from using the splash pads at Carver Park and Second Ward Park. Need a motion, please? Author. Second. Roll call. Councilman Van Rudenborg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Paglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor Labras. Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being Ordinance 32-2021 as introduced does now pass on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 16th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the City Council. And at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the City Clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law the notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 265-21. Oh, I'm sorry. Need a motion. Resolution number 265. Okay. Pulling it? Resolution 266-21. Resolution 266-21, introduction of ordinance number 34, 2021, an ordinance authorizing first amendment to easement agreement between R&H Hackensack Urban Renewal, the Bergen County Utilities Authority, and the City of Hackensack. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenborg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Camp uh, Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Be resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 34 2021 as introduced is now passed on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on august 16th 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m or soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the city council and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on the first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 267-21. Resolution designated Meridia Hackensack 151 Urban Renewal LLC, redeveloper of block 82.01, lots 25.01, 27, 28, 30.01, 30.02, and 30.03, and authorizing entry into redevelopment agreement. Need a motion, please? Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LeBras. Aye. 268-21. Introduction of ordinance number 35, 2021, an ordinance authorizing financial agreement for market rate rental apartment project to be constructed upon block 82.01, blocks 25.01, 27, 28, 30.01, 30.02, and 30.03 by Meridia Hackensack 151 Urban Renewal LLC an urban renewal entity pursuant to the long-term tax exemption law, NJSA 40A, colon 20-1, et sec. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Ron Rundenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 35, 2021, as introduced is now passed first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 16, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. 
or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the city council and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 269-21. Introduction of Ordinance 36 2021, in order, ordinance authorizing entry of real estate sale agreement with designated redeveloper Meridia Hackensack 151 Urban Renewal LLC for the sale of Block 82.01, Blocks 25.01, 30.01, 30.02, 30.03, 30 the Recycling Center site, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, NJSA 40A colon 12 1 at SEC within the Green Street redevelopment area. Thank you. Resolution 270-21. Need a motion. Offer. Need a motion. Offer. Offer. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Penestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. And Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 36 2021 is introduced as now passed on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 16, 2021 at 7 p.m. For soon thereafter, as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the City Council, in such time and place, all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance, and that the City Clerk be, and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law, with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading, and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 270-21. Introduction of Ordinance Number 37, 2021, an ordinance to amend Chapter 67 of the Code of the City of Hackensack, Body Piercings, Ear Piercings, and Permanent Cosmetics to be renamed Body Piercings, Ear Piercings, Permanent Cosmetics, and Tattooing to regulate tattoo facilities within the city. Need a motion, please. Offer. Okay. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Panestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 37 2021 as introduced is now passed on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 16th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the council and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 271-21. Resolution 271-21 is an introduction of ordinance number 38, 2021. The capital ordinance of the city of Hackensack, County of Bergen, authorizing an ordinance for certain capital improvements and acquisitions and appropriating 1,760,000 and providing that such sum so appropriated shall be raised from the fund balance and capital improvement fund of the general capital fund of the city of Hackensack. Need a motion, please. Offer. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 38 2021 is introduced is now passed on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 16th, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the city council and that at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 272-21 is introduction of ordinance number 39 2021 ordinance authorizing a special emergency appropriation pursuant to njsa 40a colon 4-53b for a citywide tax reassessment in a motion please offer second roll call councilwoman von runeberg aye deputy mayor Canestrino <coughs> is absent councilman battaglia aye councilman carroll aye mayor labrosse aye be it resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 39 2021 as introduced is now passed on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on august 16 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m or soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the city council and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage 
Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. There was no motion. Oh, that was a resolution or motion? I just read that it was adopted. Oh. On to the next one, though. Sorry. 273-21. There's so many, I'm losing my place here. Introduction of Ordinance Number 402021, an ordinance to amend Chapter 170 of the Code of the City of Hackensack Vehicles and Traffic to add a new handicapped parking space in Section 49.2, parking for the handicap, Grove Street, and Hamilton Place. Any the motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rittenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilmember Taglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor Labras. Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being ordinance 40 2021 is introduced is now passed on first reading and that said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on august 16th 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the city council and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage Okay. 274-21. Introduction of Ordinance Number 41-2021, Bond Ordinance Providing for Various 2021 Capital Improvements by and in the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, appropriating $3,600,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $3,428,200 bonds or notes from the city of the city to finance part of the cost thereof. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Van Rudenborg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Bataglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor Labras. Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance, being Ordinance 41 2021, as introduced, is now passed on first reading, and that the said ordinance shall be considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on August 16, 2021, at 7 o'clock p.m., or as soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the City Council. And at such time and place, all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. And that the city clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage <clears throat> resolution 275-21 Introduction of Ordinance Number 42, 2021, an ordinance to amend Part 2, General Legislation of the Code of the City of Hackensack to establish a new Chapter 69, Cannabis Businesses. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Brad Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Taglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor Labras. Aye. Be it resolved that the above ordinance being Ordinance 42 2021 as introduced does now pass on first reading and that the said ordinance shall be considered for final passage and a meeting to be held August 16, 2021 at 7 o'clock p.m. or soon thereafter as the matter can be reached at the regular meeting place of the City Council. And at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance and that the City Clerk be and she is hereby authorized and directed to publish said ordinance according to law with a notice of its introduction and passage on first reading and of the time and place when and where said ordinance will be further considered for final passage. Thank you. Resolution 276-21. Resolution authorizing the settlement of litigation entitled James Walker versus City of Hackensack, claim petition 2013-28433, pending in the New Jersey Division of Work Workers' Compensation. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Van Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilmember Taglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Marla Bross. Aye. Resolution 277-21. Resolution requesting approval of items of revenue and appropriation for COVID-19 vaccination supplemental funding. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Van Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilmember Taglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Marla Bross. Aye. Resolution 278-21. Resolution requesting approval of items of revenue and appropriation, Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation Grant. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Bataglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor Labras. Aye. Resolution 279-21. Resolution authorizing the awarding of a state contract for purchase of five 2021 Dodge Charger police vehicles. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Bataglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Mayor Labras. Aye. 
Resolution 280-21. Resolution authorizing the release of the safety sta slash stabilization bond for the Hackensack Meridia Health Rose Garden Project. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Runenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBrasse. I will abstain. Resolution 281-21. Resolution awarding a contract for NPP grant application assistance to DMR Architecture. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Sure. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Runenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll? Aye. Aye. Resolution 282 21. Resolution awarding contract for architectural design and construction management services for the building department relocation project to DMR Architecture. Need a motion, please. Offer. Okay. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Runenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Councilman Carroll? Aye. Mayor LaBras? Aye. Resolution 283. Resolution awarding change order number one to Cefeli and Sons for Main Street Streetscape, Atlantic Street to Mercer Street. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 284-21. Resolution awarding change order number one to Cefeli and Sons for Main Street Streetscape, Mercer Street to Barry Street. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 2, that was 285? That was 284. 284. Resolution 285-21. Resolution awarding change order number one to New Prince Concrete Construction for Johnson Park entrance driveway improvements. In the motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 286-21. Resolution awarding change order number one to La Forza Construction LLC for Johnson Park Master Improvement Project Phase 1A. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 287-21. Resolution awarding contract for environmental and master planning services for Fraschini Park to Suburban Consulting Engineers. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 288-21. Resolution authorizing the cancellation of improvement authorization balances in the general capital fund. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 289-21. Resolution authorizing the awarding of co-op contract for emergency storm and sanitary sewer repairs to William J. Girardi, Inc. Need a motion, please. Offer. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 290-21. Resolution authorizing the awarding of a co-op contract for emergency storm and sanitary sewer repairs, Joseph M. Sanzari, Inc. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 291-21. Resolution awarding contract for citywide reassessment to Associated Appraisal Group. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 292-21. Resolution rejecting all bids for Atlantic Street Parking Garage Rehabilitation Project. Need a motion, please. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution 293-21. Resolution authorizing tax refund for duplicate payments, state board judgments, and tax refund. Need a motion, please. Offer. Okay. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LaBras. Aye. Resolution, that was 293? Yep. 
Resolution 294-21. Resolution authorizing a health department refund. Need a motion, please? Offer. Sure. Roll call. Councilman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Kenneth is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LeBras. Aye. Resolution 295-21. Resolution accepting redeveloper's contribution to an open space trust fund and authorizing First Amendment to redevelopment agreement with Waypoint Hackensack Urban Renewal owner LLC 435 Main Street. Need a motion, please. Offer. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Kenneth is absent. Councilman Pataglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LeBras. Aye. Resolution 295, or 296-21. Resolution authorizing a revised direct connection agreement between R and H Hackensack Urban Renewal and the Bergen County Utilities Authority and the City of Hackensack. Need a motion, please. Offer. Okay. Roll call. Councilwoman Bob Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Kenneth is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LeBras. Aye. Resolution 297-21. Resolution authorizing the City of Hackensack to enter into an agreement with the Hackensack Public School District regarding the school nurse services for non-public schools for the Bergen County Christian Academy. Need a motion, please. Offer. Okay. Roll call. Councilman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Kenneth Strino is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LeBras. Aye. Resolution 298-21. Resolution A, providing for the combination of certain bond ordinances in determining the form and other details of the offering of $28 million general improvement bonds, Series 2021 of the City of Hackensack, County of Bergen, State of New Jersey, and providing for their sale, and B, authorizing the sale and issuance of 3,469,000 bond anticipation notes, Series 2021 of the City. In the motion, please. Offer. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Kenneth is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LeBras. Aye. Resolution 299-21. Authorizing payment of bills. Need a motion to pay the bills. Offer. Okay. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Kenneth is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Aye. Mayor LeBras. Aye. Okay, before we go into consent agenda, I know Councilman Carroll needs a resolution pulled. I believe it's 300-21, uh, correct? Correct. Anyone else have any conflicts in here? There should be two that I think we're... Yes. 300-21 and 304-. 300 and 304 are going to be pulled and voted on separately. Okay, so 39 and 43 are out. Anybody else have any conflicts? Following items are considered to be routine in nature and will be enacted in one motion. Any items requiring expenditure are supported with by a certificate of availability of funds. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda and consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes, including any exceptions and or additions. The consent agenda will consist of resolution 301 through resolution 313-21 with the exception of 300 and 304 which are 301 is authorizing an ambulance reimbursement, 302 re authorizing ambulance reimbursement, 303 authorizing advertisement of bids for Pine Street Roadway drainage improvements, resolution 304 is a resolution awarding execution of grant, oh, we're doing, we pulled that one, uh, 305 resolution appointing Susan Banson and Ryan Westra as members of the Bergen County Regional Community Development Committee, Resolution 306 is authorizing a person-to-person -person liquor license transfer of Solari's Restaurant, Inc. to Tavern 61, LLC. Resolution 307, authorizing endorsement of proposed Bergen County Community Development Grants. Resolution 308, authorizing approval to submit grant application and execute grant agreement with NJDOT for intersection of Essex Street and Railroad Ave improvement project. Resolution 309, authorizing a Approval to submit grant application and execute grant contract with the New Jersey G DOT for Summit Ave roadway improvements. Resolution 310, authorizing raffle license. 311, authorizing neighborhood preservation program for Hackensack Anderson Street Historic Neighborhood District. Resolution 312, adopting the City of Hackensack procedure for administration and inspection of federal highway projects. And Resolution 313 is entering into it an agreement with Greater Bergen Community Action, a 501c3 nonprofit agency to administer the neighborhood preservation program. Allison, I'm going to ask you that you pull 310-21. Uh, 310? 310? 
It'll be read separate. Okay, so I need a motion to accept the consent agenda. Uh, as it was read without the three that were pulled. Offer. Sir. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Kanishino is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Councilman Carroll? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Resolution 300 is resolution accepting the New Jersey Department of Law and Public Safety Office of Attorney General grant for body worn cameras. Walker. Echo. Roll call. Councilman Von Brunenberg? Aye. Deputy American Nostrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Councilman Carroll? Abstain. And Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Resolution 30421, resolution authorizing the execution of a grant award agreement under award number 21 dash. BWC-174 between the State of New Jersey, Office of Attorney General, Department of Law and Public Safety, and the City of Hackensack through the key fiscal year 21 body worn camera grant program. The motion. Offer. Second. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Rudenberg. Aye. Deputy Mayor Kennedy Cohn is absent. Councilman Battaglia. Aye. Councilman Carroll. Abstain. And Mayor LaBrosse. Aye. Resolution 310 2021 is a resolution authorizing raffle license for Volunteer Center of Bergen County and Unico of Hackensack. In a motion, please. Offer. Roll call. Councilwoman Von Runenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Councilman Carroll? Aye. And Mayor LaBrosse? I will abstain. And that is it. That's quite a large. I've been doing this for a while, and that might be the largest docket we've ever done in one night. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff on there work. So I need a motion to open to the public, please. Offer. Roll call. Councilman Von Runenberg? Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino is absent. Councilman Battaglia? Aye. Councilman Carroll? Aye. Mayor LaBrosse? Aye. Okay. Anybody from the public who'd like to speak, you may come forward. Please give your name to the clerk. I'm going to remind everybody that we now have a three-minute clock there. We are not going to interrupt you during your public comments. And in three minutes, your time will be up. Thank you. Good evening. Marty Smith, Prospect Avenue, member of the Hackensack Condo Co-op Advisory Board. I'd like to return to two issues that have been brought to the attention of uh, the council in the past. The first issue is of the intersection of Second Street and Central Avenue in regard to traffic safety devices. Currently, there are six at this location. Two designated crosswalks, two traffic safety stanchions, and two pedestrian signs. Whereas the intersection of Summit and Golf Place has three safety devices, one designated crosswalk, and two pedestrian signs. Both of these locations have houses of worship located at those points. Mr. Ehrenberg, of blessed memory, said he would check on why this disparity, disparity exists. I don't know if he was able to make inquiries concerning this situation before his untimely passing. But if there is currently any information in regard to this situation in the city manager's office, our committee would appreciate being informed. If there is none, we would appreciate our city manager doing follow-up on this issue. The second item concerns the intersection of Prospect and Passaic for northbound traffic. There is a merge point for northbound traffic on the north side of Passaic Street. Our committee has suggested as long as Two years ago, when I did a ride-along with Lieutenant Patel of the Traffic Department, that the interior lane of Prospect Avenue for northbound traffic be made a dedicated left-turn lane, leaving the curbside lane as a straight-through or right-turn lane. This would eliminate the merge point on the north side of Passaic Street, and we could remove the current merge sign that is currently there. No action has been taken on this, and I rode with Lieutenant Patel in November of 2019. I'd like to remind you that currently, 
Summit and Passaic, the intersection, have dedicated left turns on Summit Avenue for both north and southbound traffic. Summit Avenue and Essex Street intersection both have dedicated left turns. And Prospect Avenue at Essex Street has dedicated left turns on Prospect Avenue for both north and southbound traffic. I think it's time that the city took action to remove this danger on Prospect Avenue for northbound traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And uh, Tom, you'll look into that. Um, one of the things that has to be looked at on, uh, where, I guess it was golf and prospect is whether their new handicap curbs are, you know, the, the new access curbs are installed yeah. or not. I don't know if they are. It's like a, it's gonna be like a team. So. Okay. Next person from the public, please. Hello, Steve Even? Garcia. Um, I, I just wanted to say thank you again for uh, allowing me to play at the inauguration. I was born in Hackensack, went through the uh, elementary public school system there, played at the rec center there, basketball, soccer. So I'm very happy to be a Hackensack citizen. And so um, it, it always brings me a lot of joy being able to come back and do stuff for you guys. So um, when I got the call, hey, like, do you want to come down and play? I was absolutely thrilled because every time that I come back here, I, I always get happy because I only have uh, good memories. So thank you guys again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. did a great yeah. job. Dude. Thank you. <laughs> Next, please. Good evening, Reverend Carolyn Davis. Yeah. Um, welcome, Mr. Carroll. This does not involve you because you're new in the council, but you have probably heard us up here many times talking about this very issue. Um, I did not have chance to make copies and pictures again. I have lived on Stanley Place in Hackensack now for 47 years. And for 47 years, I have dealt with flooding in my basement. We came a couple years ago talking about the same issue. I'm very grateful to uh, our past city manager, uh, Ted, who did start an effort to try and have this cleaned. But apparently that is not enough. We have neighbors here, even from James Street. All of our blocks get flooded. I don't mean water that covers my shoes. You could row a rowboat down our street. And again, I can't show you. Everybody want to show this city manager. You can't see the sidewalk. I, I was there that day. It, it's horrible. The taxes that you say you're saving us, people spend in cleaning out their basements every single time. Cars get ruined. Furniture gets ruined. This happens all the time. I'd rather pay the increase in taxes because it'd probably be less than what we have to spend every time. Getting new sump pumps, putting French drains in over and over again. I think 47 years is long enough talking about having patience with dealing with a problem, even though we only really started complaining about it a couple years ago. But 47 years, we've been cleaning out our basements. It is an EPA violation. We get sewer water and sewage, and I don't know how much longer we can keep coming and asking. This development that's going on is gonna make our streets even worse. The infrastructure needs to be repaired on our streets. We can no longer live like this. It's horrible. And anybody who doesn't come in our block and doesn't know this, I invite you. You can't see it. Happens that, I'm not mistaken, was the only town in Bergen County that made the news. I had relatives from down south calling me to ask me were we okay. It was so bad. I, I don't think you can ask any more of us because I think we've been patient long enough. It has to be taken care of. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Rucker, if you could just give me one minute to respond, please, thank you. It, it, we are working on it. As you know, the project's put in place for the stormwater uh, system that's be, going to be installed all the way up from James and Clay up on the hill down. Um, this has been an ongoing problem for a long, long time. This is the first council, and, and I got to say, you say the redevelopment is going to make it worse, the redevelopment is going to make it better. Those buildings are required to have water, underground water retention systems that make it much better than it was 
before they came in. Much, much better before they came in. And we can't go back and forth, Ms. Davis, all right? But I just want to make it clear. We are moving forward with this, but it's, it's going to happen. But this takes time. To, you just don't wake up, okay, we're going to do it, and the next day it's done. Ma'am, please, no motions from the, from the thing. We have been working tirelessly, have, and the funding from these buildings that are going up is what's paying for, or help to pay for these new projects, these stormwater projects. We've been working on it, believe me, it's happening. It's, you know, and I find it a little ridiculous that you think Hackensack is the only town in Burger County that flooded. It's the only one that was advertised because that's what they do. They pick the biggest city in the county and they come here, you know, we have a lot of flooding. There's flooding. I had tons of water in my basement. I've had tons of, I live on Brook Street. I've had flooding since I moved here 42 years ago in my house. And I've had at least 30 or 40 times that water. I didn't say Hackensack was the only one that flooded. It's the only one that was, right. That's exactly, they, they chose Hackensack, all right? We're the largest city. We live on a river. We're, you know, a, a city on a river is gonna have more flooding than a city on a hill, all right? So, what else was I going to say? The um, anyway, Miss Rucker, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Once again, um, I'm going to kind of finish off on the back of uh, Reverend Davis. You know, I came here before, stood here once again, talking about the floodings of Stanley Place and the other surrounding streets that make up the third and fourth ward. This area sits in the valley of the city of Hackensack. And as the homes that are built over a brook are mostly owned by black and brown people, many occasions of the past residents have stood before this council, excluding Mr. Carroll, and spoke about this issue. What we received was the DPW coming to clean out the sewer systems and the catch basins. But our former city manager, Ted, passed away and then everything stopped. The bacteria that enters our home is toxic. It breaks down our foundations of our home as well as the resale value. It creates health issues with mold and mildew and spores that can create respiratory um, issues. We continue to get uh, presentations from the company that the city has hired while homeowners have lost memories of personal items that they can't get back, but have to throw away. We want no more presentations, we want results. If this city council was smart when they were doing their negotiations of contracts, which I have one right here in my hand, of the infrastructure of fixing the streets, instead of giving away the city, city with pilot programs for 30 years or more, so we don't have to talk about this no more. We want results. We're getting ready to have a development around the corner on Anderson Street, which is the old Rudy's restaurant. They gave $550,000 to put into the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, but instead they should have been given the 10%, because that $550,000 could have helped fix the streets. We are going to have more issues around that corner and in this area because of this building that's coming. You guys keep saying, we're fixing it, we're fixing it, we're fixing it. But guess what? What happens to our homes? Do you understand how much damage is being done to the property? But you don't care. I've said it before. Brown and black people or homeowners in this area? So for me, when you keep saying, when I said to you before about races and race, this is a racial issue. Let's correct this problem as quickly as possible. Let us not keep talking what you're doing or going to do. And I don't want to see two or three years down the line. I need to see this happen as soon as possible. Okay. Ms. Rucker. I'm a little new to the game, but I do. I would. I would like to respond only because I was out on those streets that night, and the reason I was there is because the mayor actually called me and said you need to get down to this area and see what's going on here, and, and I did. And I was down there for several hours, mostly on Barry, because the other streets eventually did drain. Barry never drained. I was there with suburban consulting engineers. I was there with our DPW, and helping to identify the problems. 
But I, I well, you know, and I had this discussion with some of the homeowners there that night. Believe me, it's a horrific, horrific situation what's going on in your basements. I personally can feel for it. But please understand, and I confirmed this number with the CFO today, this council has appropriated $26 million over the last two years towards sewer separation projects that are specifically going to affect the way that the streets flood. But understand, we have to start where the water goes, all, this, all the storm water goes out to the Hackensack River. So the first phase of the project has to be to increase there and start working back. It doesn't do any good to increase the capacity up by you guys, putting it into smaller pipes still. It's not going to go anywhere. It's still going to back up into you. So it has to, the bigger pipe has to start at the river and that phase one. No, no, and, and, and there's three phases of the project. I mean, you know, suburban is all four phases. The CFO just reminded me. And, and it's, it is going to take time, honestly. And, and believe me, I, I was down there. I was sloshing through the water. I was trying to help unclog that, those mid-street you know, manholes that were stuffed up. But it's, it, it's not easy to say, but you're going to need patience because the first phase is done. Okay. No, I know. I'm just telling you from what I've been educated into and what I've found out in the past couple weeks is that phase one is done and they just have to increase the pipe starting at the river, otherwise it can't go anywhere. The only other thing I will, I will say, which I wasn't aware of this, and maybe some people who are listening may not be aware of this, but if you're getting sewer backed up through your sewer line in the basement, like maybe into a toilet, you, and if you... No, it wasn't in the toilet. Okay. Let me tell you how forceful the water was. Okay. The water took the cap off of our drain. The clean out? Right. Yeah. We have two sub pumps. Uh -huh. The sub pumps were covered. When I say covered, we stepped into three feet of sewer with feces mm -hmm. and everything else in our do, do you have a backflow preventer? We have everything that is... No, and I just say that because some people don't understand that. If, no, you, install a, no, if I... you install a backflow preventer on your lateral, which comes off the street, that should prevent any backflow from coming in. Okay. That's it. When I, like I said, but please just confirm that. Maybe. Yeah. was a, was a pump. But you, well, I understand it, but if it's coming through your sewer line, please just check with your plumber because that backflow preventer must not be operating. No, it's operating. Well, that, then it shouldn't back it up. Will, okay. No, it, it does. When, yeah. the, when the cap gets forced off and the water is gushing through, I understand that, that's but the, the, the back so will. Yeah. I, I, right. I, I, you know, it's, guys, it's wait. No, no, no. The object I, of the new time was to avoid the back and forth. Thank you. John, you mentioned the. Uh, I'm rich. I'm sorry. I'm rich. Servo from uh, Spring Valley Avenue. And I'm going to bring up Spring Valley Avenue in a minute, but you mentioned the docket and how long it was. I mean, come on, we haven't been here in so long, so what's, what's the big deal? We haven't been here in a year and a half. Where the heck have you been except on Zoom? And look, Zoom and this technology, uh, uh, you know, moving ahead, does it work? We need face to face discussions about everything. And here, I mean, we discuss a few things here. What do we got? 10 more minutes, 20 minutes? You need to have some kind of open session where there's a lot of discussion about everything. People have things to discuss. There's not many people here. I guess they're getting used to this technology, which is it's just not the same as face to face. Okay? And so all right, let me, let me go back to where I was um, earlier. Uh, I said things about uh, parking, and parking, there's always been a parking problem in this city, and it needs to be corrected. So why not get there, do it, uh, have free parking, more free lots, more free uh, um, areas to park. Uh, uh, why not more parking garages, okay? Free ones, something, do something. The, the parking is uh, horrendous and they say, I can't even park at the friggin' library. There's no place to park. You can't go there. Oh, gee, I'm gonna stop. You know, I'm gonna pick up a couple of books. I'll double park. Although they do now have a double parking space at the library so you can run in and pick up a book. Okay, so that's one thing. Now let me get back, because I know I'm gonna get cut off soon, that Spring Valley Avenue is a raceway. Uh, Mr. Uh, City Manager, it's a raceway and it's not policed. Lots of places 
Police are backing off. They're not policing anything. There are people going 60 miles an hour on Spring Valley Avenue. And I call the city manager's office to tell them about it. And at least they're, they're listening. They, they are. If you call the front desk or call the police about uh, traffic and speeding, whoa, they'll say, sorry, pal. They'll put you all, we don't want to hear it, OK? So the city manager gets my complaints, and the girls in the office are welcoming. They at least give it an effort to do something about it. But please, I'm telling you, buses are going 55, 60 miles an hour on Spring Valley Avenue, coming down the hill to Main Street, OK? Check it out sometimes. It's dangerous, too. So uh, I guess that's about it. I got three seconds. Thanks. Thank you, sir. It lay flat against the. If I just want to make one comment, we certainly didn't have much choice but to have Zoom meetings. Um, government ordered. I mean, you know, I don't know, Mr. Serbo. I'm sure you were aware there was a pretty big pandemic going on. And, no, you can't. We're not going to go back and forth, Rich. But we had to have Zoom meetings. That was the only way we could carry on business. We've been doing dockets the whole time, every meeting. All right, this is just a very large docket. That's all I was saying. An 18 month master rate. Thank you, John. Okay, so what was the, what was the alternative, sir? There were plenty of alternatives. All right, there was no pandemic, right? There were plenty of them. Sir? Father, how are you? Father Brian Laffer, St. Anthony's Church. Sir? 72 Love Ice Street, Peck, in fact. Um, tonight I'm here to talk about flooding as well. We've had a lot um, recently, um, going back to last summer, um, July 6th and July 10th, we had severe storms in the neighborhood. And I've noticed that in the past seven years, there, the environment has changed in some way, that we have more of these backups of, of really sewer water into St. Anthony's Parish Hall. Um, I'm also here to speak to several address, several homes, um, Holt Street, Lodi Street that have the same phenomenon of um, flooding as well as um, as well as the corner of, of Campbell Avenue and Grove Street and people that live along Grove Street folks that are active members of our parish mm -hmm. um, and neighbors that I've known I've been in all of these homes um, everyone talks about the amount of flooding and the amount of backup St. Anthony's we had we sustained $25,000 in damage from last summer that we still haven't. We're, we're just getting around to repairing because um, there just haven't been the workmen available to us during the pandemic. Um, so we're in the process of dealing with that. Uh, we did put check valves in this week into our toilets in our bathrooms in the basement of the parish hall. That seems to have alleviated the problem. We didn't have water this past Saturday, but I'm, I'm hoping that that's it for us. However, um, I do know that um, a lot of sewer repair is going to be happening and the repaving of streets in our neighborhood is going to be happening. I just want to hold that up as um, to look at the, ask this council to look at the total picture um, and see how best that situation could, can be resolved. I'm glad to hear that uh, phase one of one of the projects towards Result. And I know it's a citywide problem, and I, it's not just our neighborhood. So um, thank you for hearing this. Thank you, Father Lockwood. Appreciate it. Next person, please. Name to the clerk. Hello, my, my name is Beatrice Rodriguez. I'm coming for the same problem. When I bought my house in 2003, uh, we never tell me that it's a flooding area, so I never pay the insurance for flooding. Now we have more problem with the salt water. It's, it's not the same as raining water, because the raining water is clear, but the salt water. You don't want to see my basement. The last door that it was raining, it was terrible. It still today it smell terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's dangerous for us. Where do you live, I'm sorry? 
I live in 59 Campbell Avenue, right in the corner. They changed the corner. That day, they they not already finished. And they, they left the hole next to the drain in the corner. They left to the hole. And the problem is a lot of neighbors, they came for the same problem. I called the city and they sent me email. They sent me the email and it's called we Patricia Patricia Steven because my English is not so good. So she helped me and she sent the letter to Joy and Susan Benson. They told me they recommended me to to install it the bad flow preventer. But why? Now I have to pay $5,000. I don't know how much they're going to charge me for that. Because it's not my problem. It's not my house problem. It's the street problem, the city problem. Why I have to spend my money now for that? It's like, like woman. I have problems my 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 kidneys. I have problems probably in my liver. But, oh no, put a makeup, probably with the makeup you feel better. No, it's not working like that. I need the please, I just say please, do something for us. Do something. We don't need the corner nice. We don't need the, the nice street with red blocks. We need to make it something really big for the suit border. Because I understand, in Green Street, long time ago, it was a flooding area, terrible. They put it the big one, the big one, what do you call it? Five. And now the, the water is coming to my street. So how the water is going, it's going. They don't have the space to the water go. So what can I do? Tell me what I'm supposed to do with my house. First, Tell I want to let you finish before I start because your time is up. But I want to, I want to, <clears throat> again, let's have Suburban just check out that area. Um, yeah, Mayor and, yeah, and residents, this, this has been thoroughly vetted. It's been on the on the topic, uh, the daily topic for the past couple days. Um, I have an email here uh, just from today. This is regarding Grove and Campbell. Mm -hmm. um, there was some concern, a slight confusion about the sewers there. The sewers are not combined there. Uh, the sewers were previously separated in that area. So the storm improvements or the, the conditions with the rain have no effect on a sanitary system since the area is already separated. Right. So the backup of sewerage into, into the residents' basements has, sh should not have been affected by the storm at all. Uh, yeah, but the but I'm saying that the storm water and the sewer. Only the oh, oh, oh. Three from the okay. Three, four from the and so, uh, uh, step uh, number two on the, on a response from uh, our project managers and Neglia uh, under Neglia's oversight, Smith's uh, Sandy reconstructed the catch basins at the intersection and added additional drainage. The DPW and project management department verified. The main appears to be flowing normally and the catch basins were clear and dry. We informed Negley and requested SCE to inspect and advise again. Um, it should be noted that the DPW and the project management have not received any sewer complaints of this area prior to July 12th. That no right. So prior to July 12th, have you ever brought this yes. to the attention of the DPW or the? Yeah, I call, I call after the okay. raining and even before. Okay. I usually call so the, fir the first reported issue that we received, and this is from the project managers to the city manager's office, was on July 12th, where the resident, 59 Campbell, uh, reported sewage backup in the basement. The resident confirmed there was no backflow preventer installed in the lateral. The pro project management advised the resident to engage a licensed plumber to inspect their lateral to verify the condition and to install a backflow preventer. Uh, all property owners are responsible for their lateral through the connection to the city main. The city's responsible for the main area. Um, so project management went there, they had Negley go there. They're paving the streets, but the, the actual storm sewers have been upgraded. You know, the catch basins on the corners were upgraded. Right. It's separated. So it's, it, it doesn't make sense that the inundation of storm water sh should not have 
added to any sewer back up there because oh. they're separated. Let's, you know, I, know, I know a lot of you people, if I may, please, please. I know a lot of you, or most of you are gonna disagree with me, but that was a storm that we haven't seen like that, and I can't tell you when. We had five inches of rain in one hour. One hour. You're talking about a different storm? On Green Street? Well, we need to, please, we have to stop back and forth. That's not the decorum of the meeting, all right? Everybody gets their three minutes, all right? We're trying to solve a problem here, but if you're gonna yell at us from the audience, nothing will get solved. It's just not gonna happen, okay? I need you to get suburban to see if there's any breach into the sewers from the stormwater system. Something has to be going on if there's, if, if the stormwater's overflowing and we're getting sewer backups in the basement, there has to be something wrong. So let's check it out. All right, let them check it out. Throw some cameras down there, find out where this stuff is going. All right. Next person, sir. My question is, is to um, Stephanie and Kathy. Kathy is not here, but I have a question. As you and um, Kathy have made a point to state that you guys, you two, uh, involved with the Board of Education, you meet with them on a monthly basis. My question is, do you and Kathy believe in critical race theory? Looking for a straight answer. I want no political answers, but yes or no. Then, what was it? Stop, can you stop the clock? Stop the clock. Stop the clock. You got the clock? Yeah, stop, stop. stop. Could you tell me what it has to do with city business, sir? This is about city they business. The, they said they involved with the Board of Education. So you're telling me, but... It has a lot to do with but the But what, what is them having been involved with the Board of Education have because to do with critical know race they, theory? What their, what their process of thinking. No, that's, that's not part of city business. That's... Then why are they involved with the Board of Education? Because there's a liaison between the Board of Education okay, and the city so, council. Well, what is their position? Oh, why, what is, what is this... I, I have no idea what the Board of Education's position. Excuse me, but you're telling, you're asking her. It's a trap question. I'm not going to. That is a trap. That's a trap question. No, I'm going to tell you why. Because I ask the same questions on the Board of Education. I sit on the on 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 the committee, and I ask the same question amongst the, the educators. How's a trap question? It's a yes or no. Mr. Geddes, we all we discuss is how we can work together on, on different things. Usually it's facilities, how we can support the schools and, you know, different initiatives. Um, we don't really talk about curriculum. We don't talk about If I may, anything. have you ever dis discussed critical never, race theory never, with the Board of Ed? Never. It's never been discussed. Never. No. All right? So now if you're asking, you're asking her as a city council member, not as a liaison, okay? Hasn't been discussed, hasn't been brought up so to her, doesn't belong say? here. Uh, it belongs anywhere in government. I have the right to ask the question. I, I, I have the right to ask you. You, you most certainly question. do. You can ask me. And you know what? I have the right not to answer. Okay. So that gives me my answer. No, it doesn't. Yes, Absolutely it does. does not. Yes, it does. Absolutely since does you, not. Since you brought it up like that, it gives me I didn't my bring answer. it up, sir. You did. No, no. Since you right. answered me like that. So you have three minutes to direct your questions. Okay. To uh, that is my question. To her. And what about you, John? Do you believe in critical race theory? I'm not going to answer any of that okay. because I, I don't even know that much about it. You I haven't know, studied you, it. I've heard of it. Simplify what it is. It's, uh, have you heard Did of Did you start the clock? Yes, sir. Have you ever heard of the Amistad Commission? No. Have you, Stephanie? No. And you're an educator? I'm a supervisor, a special you're ed. Educator. I'm a supervisor of special education. You, yes, okay. It's only been a law for 20 years. You don't even know what the law is. You should read up on that. That's true. Okay. All right. If you, if you work in education, if you don't know what the Amistad law is. Okay. And John, are you, do you believe in critical race theory? Since you don't want, since you brought it up, that I can ask you. No. Sir, I, like I said, I don't know enough about it. It's about right. you, you want to sit and have a discussion it's with me? Simple. It's about history. The African American experience in America. That's all it's about. 
Okay. And you you have no you don't know nothing about it. The only thing I've seen in critical race theory is that it was supposed to, it was meant to be taught in colleges, uh, not in lower education, secondary education, or, or primary education, or program. elementary education. That's, that's, that's all I know about it. Does. That's all I know about it. In a whole state in New Jersey, it's a law that you must teach history, African American history, in every subject. I don't have an issue with that. Okay. If you're telling me that's all critical race theory is, is it's teaching much. African American history? I don't have an issue with that. Okay. We all, all our history should be studied and celebrated. No, 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 Everybody, no, no. every single person in this room's history should be celebrated. But we're talking about African American history, and you know, and I know, has never been properly taught in the school system in America. You know that. John, don't, don't, don't. Mr. Geddes, I moved to this town. I could have moved to any town I wanted to. I grew up here as a child. I moved to, let me finish. I moved away. I moved back here because I wanted my children to experience diversity. All right, I wanted them to grow up with all different types of people. That's why I'm still here. All right? That, that doesn't please you. I can't please you then. I'm sorry. But your time is up. Thank you, Victor. Appreciate it. Most certainly did. Next, please. I beg your pardon? You heard me. When I call you a racist, you have no comment. No, that's a, de that's a derogatory racist. comment, sir. Thank you very much for that. Ma'am, how are you? Uh, good evening. Uh, good my evening. name is Helen Franklin. I live at 200 James Street, Hackensack. Well, I'm not going to do on the flood issue because that's, everyone's talked about it. I had enough water in my base when I could have fished. But anyway, I'm concerned about the fireworks. We have a, 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 I live on James Street, Berry, it's James Street, Berry Street, Stanley Place. It's ridiculous. I mean, they're not little ones, like when I grew up with pop, pop, pop. It's like your whole house shakes. Uh, we have a new uh, young man and his family moved in on James Street, and he had a party, which is okay, they're young, but they brought out these fireworks that they could have blew up an air, airplane. So we all ran down and told him that you cannot do this. He says, well, I'm from the Bronx. We do this over there. He said, well, you can't do this here. He told us to go home and mind your business. So we were all calling the cops, you know, we was trying to tell them what was going on. They came as fast as they could because they had to go on Barry Street. They had to go to Stanley Place. And uh, when they finally came was one officer and the young man was like, you can't tell me what to do. I mean, he had three big bags, the black garbage bags mm -hmm. of fireworks. It was these big red ones. And he was just exploding them. It could have went to anybody's houses and caught on fire. And if we had went to him, he says, well, I didn't do anything. But the police officer had backup. And then they all started going back into the, the yard. And uh, when the officers left, they kept on doing, but small ones. My question and concern, it's getting ridiculous with these fireworks. Now, up James Street is 2nd Street and um, James Street. It's like every weekend. It's on, uh, I think it's Madame Place. They're there. I think it's Stanley. It's not too much on Stanley Place. But I'm concerned because all it takes is one. Your house is on fire. Okay? And nobody knows what happened to it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. So I'm just asking you, now, I know there's an ordinance. You have to either send it out to people or something, but it's very scary. Because I don't want to lose my home, and I'm quite sure no one else here wants to lose their home. But it's getting ridiculous now with these gigantic fireworks. <laughs> Every weekend, it, it's just crazy. It is getting out of hand. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Could I ask you before you leave real quick, was this just around 4th of July or this is a totally no, separate time? No, before that. Time? But this particular young person, uh, couple that moved in, he had a, a party. Okay. And he came out with these three big bags. My neighbor, she went up the street and you said, you can't do this. And I was screaming, you, know, you can't do this on this block. It's, the houses are too close. Go down to the park. He told us to shut up. We can do what we want to do. Mm, that's a little so rude. we was calling, you know, the police officers yeah. to come because 
the lady across from him, she opened the door and said, you can't do it. He said, go back in your house. Yeah. I can do what I want to do. One, so, one of the things that are making it tougher is statewide. They made fireworks legal two years ago. Yeah. It's made it very much harder. It's getting, but, uh, it's getting scary. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah. And, you know, you can't approach them because right away it's an argument. Okay? Next thing you know, you have a fireworks in your window. Right. So I hear today you. it's not like it used to be. I've been here many years because you could say, you know, it's okay, have a few. But this, these fireworks was ridiculous. I mean, it blew up the, I mean, it was exploding the whole block. I said, what is it? I mean, the houses were shaking. He's going to have it looked into. Yeah. All right. I can give you the number of the, the house, too. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, next. Hackensack. Uh, I'm objecting to resolution 275-21, which is the city code of Hackensack to establish a new chapter 61 cannabis businesses. Uh, we had Inglewood and Teaneck already say no to any cannabis zones or businesses in their area, but Hackensack has proved to do otherwise, it seems. <coughs> if you go out to Belburn, Parsifany, Caldwell, Cedar Grove, this will never get passed through, but Hackensack has seemed to do something different. Of the five, People that sit on this city council, they had a total of 8,673 votes, while the other 10 candidates had a total of 9,893 votes. So basically what I'm saying is the residents of Hackensack, you got to voice your concerns apply the moral pressure that is necessary to make the change. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, give your name to the clerk, please. Marie Dukes, 175 James Street, Hackensack, New Jersey. I just have a few corrections that I just want to make clear. For the water switch problem, everyone has known me since 1995 and I've spoken to some of the city councils and I think you recognize my name in a couple of my letters to you yes. back in uh, 2003 when we took a couple of people to court to prevent building in one James Street one our black association won those cases and I think that we'll have to do it again now the city of Hackensack because they failed the city of Hackensack and you could take it to summit um, three judges because the city of Hackensack failed to intervene properly for that one incident with the zoning you had to pay uh, something like eleven thousand dollars to the other party because as a right of interveners in the city of Hackensack as residents we had a right to fight it but the city failed to represent properly and that's why you had to pay that fine. Just, um, I'm not gonna give you the transcript. I paid for it, you pay for the transcript too. The other part of it is, um, and, as inter and there's a law in the United States that you can act as an intervener when your city fails to represent you properly. So everybody, let's think about this. If our city is not representing us properly, we need to act as interveners and go after the city. And, um, and win. Because we did. So I also wanted to explain. I'm sorry, I never got to meet you. I have been busy. Chief Tom Freeman. Okay, the back flow back. Because of the pressure. Now I have to get on hold. They do not hold. And um, my, I put two in at different di distance to level when the first one sure. cracks to slow the pressure down so it doesn't meet the second one. But it's not fair for the residents to have to come up with that kind of money. 
I actually think I have three. One under, you can come to my house. And I also did, I did a camera. I have camera footage from the house to the street. Or the water. Um, and I think we really had a lot of the zoning. What year was that? Um, from 2003 to 2007. No? No, that wasn't oh, me. Okay. Sorry. So that I'll go to the zoning. Uh, okay. I'll get the letters and the names. And I'll share with you some of the So, for fireworks. Go ahead, can you finish up? Fireworks your time is up are yet. not legal in the state of New That was a mistake. I disagree. I just went. Well, I'm reading July 4th reading weekend, the supermarket had boxes and boxes of them for sale. Let me help. He's the fire chief. I think he might know a little bit about that one. <laughs> Ma'am, our, our three minutes is up. Why don't you send the three? But okay, it says all, well, it, it gives you the sparklers and different things of that sort that say go up to the I can, I can tell you for sure that fireworks were, certain but fireworks were legalized. But all other fireworks remain illegal, including all explosives, which you would go in on all of those boxes. Aerial fireworks. Ma'am, your, your time, your time, your time is up, and a young lady is waiting. Firecrackers, sky rockers, bio Am. rockets, Roman candles, Am. and small devices. Did you mind me taking? No, 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 no ma'am. Ma there's a there's a set time, three minutes. I am sorry. Can somebody come up and give me their minute? No, no, you can't do that. I'm sorry. No, it's not a law. Uh, I'm not sure if this pertains. This is my first time coming here. How are you? But um, I'm the owner of Community Resource Center. Mm -hmm. and I have been running programs for the years. This is the complaint. This is something that I don't know about more to say. Many people came up and said they weren't offering anything when it comes to like tennis for young mm -hmm. ladies and those type of things. Yes. Um, my niece teaches at one of the colleges in Georgia. And she's coming up, and that's one of the programs that we actually are offering. Okay. She's a basketball court coach. Right now, they're not working for whatever reason. So that's one of the things that we're actually starting. That would be. So I heard that. Yeah. I said, wow, we're going to be doing it in the park, though. Okay. We don't charge any fees. Um, I actually offer tutoring. Right now, I'm working with college students where I help them get the I'm a Delta, so I help them get their scholarships. Um, I have some seniors working for me. We weren't paying it, it was just a way of giving back. So I have a lot of programs this year that I'll be offering. Because one of the things that I didn't notice is that at the centers that are around the different things, they don't offer those kind of programs. Yeah. The other, one of my main programs is I wanted to work with the police department because it's about gun violence and that type of thing. So we usually talk on Zoom, you know, discussing, hey, what do you do if this happens? What if you do if that happens? How do you respond? That's permitted for women. So there's a lot of programs, and I still do a lot of counseling with infertility, people who are going through divorce, as well as access and financial. So we do a lot of things. There is no charge. I am not nonprofit. I was just blessed. <laughs> so this is my way of just giving back. So I just wanted to, you know, offer that. One of the things is I own the building. I paid it off. So there was a mortgage. So it helped. Unfortunately, I will tax it, so I'm getting ready to try to get those done. But I did want to mention. Where are you looking? 14 South Street, from right next to the Pizza Hut. Yep. So, um, so that was one of the things. So, if you know of any brands, because like everybody I use, I usually yeah. call my sisters yeah. who are Deltas, you know, who are my sorority sisters. And, I, you know, I had several seniors working there with me, and it just gave them something to do. And, and they were just telling me the stories. I got some sewing machines from the um, one of the high schools that I used to teach at. They gave me a whole thing of my uh, sewing machines. So because of people wanting to be designers and fashion and all of that, I thought that would be a great way. I had one of the ladies who do so and say, I would love to come in and do some of those things. So I just wanted to to just add to that. Just but make sure that the manager has your information oh, so we yeah, can reach out to you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Lynch. Thank you. Sounds great. This guy, give this next guy a minute. Make sure that he doesn't go over. Thanks, Mayor. If I could, I just wanted to talk uh, for a minute on, on the flooding issue, okay? Because there, there was a comment made uh, earlier um, uh, that the process stopped uh, with the passing of Ted Ehrenberg. And, and if, I know. If, that's, uh, if that's what's being believed, then 
then we're not doing a very good job of communicating what exactly it is that we're doing for the residents right. of Stanley Place, Berdan, James, what we call the, the Clay Street drainage area. So if I could just take a minute and, and, and get specific about exactly what it is that we are doing. Uh, as the interim city manager indicated earlier, in the last two years, we've appropriated $26 million toward uh, flooding throughout the city of Hackensack. Approximately 15 million of that is dedicated to the problem um, that's afflicting uh, the residents of Stanley Place. It's a four-phase uh, project. Uh, what you have to do is start at the river and work west to get up to west of the, the railroad, which is the affected area. Now, a few meetings ago, we had a presentation by Suburban Engineering where they showed the Camden Street culvert, which is a giant box culvert. It's an oversized box culvert, meaning it's larger than it needs to be to collect the excess stormwater from the Main Street sewer separation. It's deliberately made larger than it needed to be because we want it to uh, be the collector for the excess stormwater from the Clay Street drainage area. That's already been completed. That, that's, that was part of the Main Street sewer separation, right. not one of the phases of this project. The first phase of this project was then to take the separated sewers from Main Street, go west, and bring it to Park Avenue. That's the project that the interim city manager indicated is in its final phases. Okay, phase two of, the, uh, of this project is to go down to the river and increase the outfall um, at Fashini Park. This is where the collected water goes into the river. We have to make the outfall larger because we're gonna have more storm water coming. That's phase two. We'll be awarding the contract uh, to start phase two at the August 16th meeting. Okay, that project is gonna be starting. After that, the third phase of the project is then to go, because now we're separated from the river all the way up to park. Phase three is gonna take us from park all the way up to the railroad, okay? And then phase four is then to go from, uh, um, to go from the, the railroad west of the rail all the way up to Third Street, okay? When all four phases are done, yes, the, uh, what we believe is that the, what, what, what these residents have been experiencing for years, and, and, and Tom indicated, it is, it's, it's horrific, okay? Unfortunately, it has to be done in these phases. We can't do one piece before another. You really timed me, huh? It's, 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 it's kind of exempt. He's a CFO. Uh, that, that clock's not paid for yet. <laughs> in any case, uh, Mayor, as I indicated, um, I think that, that it's important for people to understand exactly uh, what it is that we're doing. Uh, more specific, we've been saying for a long time, we're taking care of it, we're taking care of it. But I really thought the, the need to get specific on exactly what we're doing. Okay? Right. Thanks Thank you for explaining that. that. Realize there's a lot of phases involved in this, and it's going to take time. And uh, you know, patience is hard to ask of people who've had flooding in their homes for 40, 50 years. So we, I understand that part. Uh, like I mentioned before, I, I still have water in my basement as I'm sitting here right now from the storms. Um, with that, anybody else in the public? Seeing none, motion to close to the public. Offer. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. None opposed. Stephanie? Sure. I do have two oh, oh, people oh, you have two? Sorry, sorry. Yep. Sorry. I have uh, from Dora Mae Davis. My name is Dora Mae Davis. I am writing to you as a concerned citizen of Hackensack, New Jersey. I reside on Stanley Place. This is not a place, this is the place where I was born and raised. I just want the best for this community. And what is developing currently is not good for the community. Infrastructure was not bad for Hackensack of yesteryear, but it is not for the Hackensack of today. What is terrible is the lack of transparency when it comes to the community. Hackensack is not built for all these high rises and excessive plumbing. It is too much for our system to handle. What do I mean? Every time there is torrential rain, my street gets heavily flooded. On Thursday, July 8th, the flooding was so terrible that the water came all the way up to the sidewalk and it was brown. There is sewage mixed in all of that. The same water is flooding the basements in the homes, traveling to people's cars, as well as damaging them. People in my community, people in your community, people in our community should not have to be subject to this. Please pay more attention to the people and their concerns. Thank you. And she also sent photos that I'll forward over to you. Okay, thank and you. And the second email is from James Irwin. Good day, Hackensack. I'm writing to ask if there will be a change to the traffic lighting system at Johnson Avenue and Jefferson at this intersection. 
there has been an increase in traffic with the future housing to come, it will only get worse. Some drivers do not know it is a three-way stop and one-way yellow, which causes confusion and a potential for serious accidents. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and yes, there will be a new, there will be a traffic light there. I believe the county is putting in a, uh, I believe a traffic signal at Jefferson and Jefferson. Or Johnson? Was it John Jefferson and Johnson? Or was Johnson it? and Jefferson. I don't know about Johnson. Definitely on. Uh, but yeah, Johnson and Jefferson. That's where it's going. Yeah, yeah that's where it's going. Yeah, because that turns into kind of come out. Yep. Okay. Go ahead, Stacey. Um, it. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It does feel good to be back out. Um, I agree with Mr. Serbo actually. Um, that you know, it's not fun to be on Zoom and and seeing everybody in person really. Um, makes a difference. Bring it um, closer. Can you hear me? No. I just want to make sure they can hear you. Sure. Um, I just want a uh, reminder, I know there's some residents of the town that approached me about planting trees. Um, we usually do that in the fall, so if you have, um, you know, a request for trees to be planted, put those in now and they'll, they'll put you on a list, but it doesn't happen until fall. Um, I usually don't respond to, you know, bad comments or, or nasty comments, but you know, because it attacked my, my job that I take very seriously. Um, you know, I've always been involved in special education. Um, you know, I have a passion for advocating for students with disabilities. You could call any of my parents of students that are now in transition programs. And if you look at the students that I've taught, they're, they're all different backgrounds and colors. I've had Spanish, I've had black, I've had white students, I've had Jewish, Catholic, and I advocate for them. So if you're asking me about critical race theory, I guess I have to say I don't look at them as a color, I look at them as a person. And I say what is going to be the best thing for this person, for this little child when they grow up, what can I do for them? And when I have kids come over my house, my, my, my kids are the minority in their schools. I know that, and when they come to my house, I don't look at them and say, oh, you're a certain color, or you have certain money. They come to my house, they sleep over, they're all friends. I tell my kids, you choose your friends based on their character, on what kind of friend they are. Are they gonna get you into trouble? Are they gonna be you know, good friends and loyal to you? My, my, eight -year -old son, my eight year old's best friend is black. He's practically, his parents were sick for a while, he was living with us for a while, I was taking care of them, him. It doesn't matter. So when people do things like that to try to paint you in a bad light, I think that's racist. That's the wrong thing to do. I'm, I'm just, I'm just telling you about my background and what, and what I do. I advocate for students. I make sure that their IEPs are being followed, that they're getting the services, the accommodations, the modifications that they need to succeed in life. And it doesn't matter what color or background they have. That's what I've done for years. So I just ask you if you have a question about my integrity or who I am or how I raise my kids, come talk. Me. ask me what my feelings are and I have a lot to, to share with you and I'm sure I'm sure we have more in common than you realize that's it thank you thank you Leo? I listen to the residents about the different problems that we got in the city and trust me I've been working the best I can to try to solve most of the problem that people are facing. And I know about the problem by Campbell and Grupo Street. I was there. I know the people that live there. And I made a recommendation from Suburban and the project manager to go and look into the problem before the street get paid. So it's not like a, we're not trying to do something to solve the problem. We are working on it, but this is a problem that I never really want to take care of before. The infrastructure of the city is over 100 years old. Nobody want to go and head on the way we are doing it. So be patient that eventually you want to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for coming. Jerry? Thank you, Mayor. First, I'd like to thank the DPW for their hard work during and after the storm. I would also like to thank our city clerk and personnel departments for assisting me in my new position. A special thanks to Councilwoman Stephanie and the rest of the council for helping me to adjust to this new position. In closing, I'm looking forward to continuing servicing this great city. 
thank you and God bless. Thank you, sir. And I want to start off with uh, welcoming Jerry to his first official duties as a council member of the city of Hackensack, or actually second now. Second now. First one was more of a celebration. This one was work, though. Yes. Uh, I, when he saw his package get delivered to the house, which was probably about this thick, <laughs> I can only imagine what you said to yourself. What am I doing? What am I getting myself into? But. Uh, Welcome aboard, Jaron. I'm sure you do a good job, and I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, what you and Stephanie are going to do with recreation and bring it back to where it was before. Looking forward to that. Miss um, <clears throat> Lynch, you're still here, right? I got a, you know, I got a great story. I got a, a young lady who lives next to me, uh, good little athlete. But uh, Hackensack certainly isn't known for its crew. If crew is, you know, the rowing thing, right? We didn't have crew here. And uh, my next door neighbor is a young African American girl, and her and her mother decided to start a crew club in Hackensack. All right, uh, Kira ended up excelling so much that she's now a two-time national qualifier, and she got a full crew scholarship to the University of San Diego, the Aztecs, where she'll be starting this year as a freshman. So that's great stuff for a young girl in a sport in a town that really, you know, you don't think of. If you think of crew, you're certainly not thinking of Hackensack, New Jersey, but you should be. Right? And uh, you will be, because that club's gonna continue on, and thanks to her and a few other uh, young boys and girls that started it, it will continue, and hopefully it will flourish. Um, those are the barriers I know that we need to get through, and, uh, but those are the good stories, too. So we need to make sure that that gets out there, and uh, I wanna congratulate uh, Kira on her high school graduation, and wish her luck as an Aztec at San Diego State University. It's gonna be great watching her uh, row out there. Um, flooding, <clears throat> again, you know, I'm not going to just repeat everything we hashed over, but uh, yeah, it was bad. I, I just brought up a video, and the uh, chief can attest to this. Main Street by Route 4 by Coles Brook was. White water rafting. You, you guys were bad, believe me. My street was bad. If you saw, you come up, I'll show you the video, you're going to say, oh my God, you wouldn't even, you'd think it's like a raging rapid somewhere, because the water's going 40 to 50 miles an hour down the street because it's a brook that overflowed and it was literally 40 feet wide. It would have taken a bus away. It was that bad. But there was flooding throughout the whole city. There was flooding. Bogota got hammered. Tina got hammered. All the, all the riverfront towns in Bergen County got hammered. Lodi was extremely bad. Garfield was extremely bad. Um, yeah, I don't know that anybody was spared from so much rain in such a short amount of time. But what happens with this, one of the things that you know, when you have underground sewers, there's only so much volume. And when you, you get an excessive amount at one time like that, it's called a surcharge. And we see it all the time. I saw manhole covers literally getting picked up off their, the, the sewer holes and flipped out from the rain, from the water surcharging out. So uh, it's, a, it's a tough problem, but one we're going to be working on. So, um, And the sooner the better. The cannabis issue. Um, just so everybody knows, there was, a, there was a poll taken and a vote taken in the city of Hackensack, and 75% of the citizens in the city of Hackensack voted yes on recreational cannabis, 75%. So a lot of that had to do with uh, myself and other council members, I'm sure, way of thinking on this. But a uh, young man, young gentleman spoke to it, and he has his right to do that. He brought up towns that weren't doing it, but there are a lot of towns bordering us that are doing it, including Rochelle Park, Paramus, um, Lodi uh, and others. We are doing the bare minimum by allowing one retail dispensary and one cultivation plant to be no processing of marijuana in the city of Akinsag. Um And we'll see where it goes from there. That's, you know, putting our foot in the water. But believe me, if somebody's smoking pot and you can't buy it in Hackensack, you can rest assured they're going to go to another town and buy it. And they're going to come right back to Hackensack and smoke it. So, um, we went through a similar situation with the cigarette ordinance when they wanted to stop uh, the sale of cigarettes to uh, people under 21. And what else? Um, I guess that's it. It's been a long night, so I need a motion to close. Offer. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat>